We are now officially at the end of September, and it's the end of what seems to be Nintendo Directs for the Nintendo Switch. Of course, we are always expecting big Nintendo Directs from Nintendo in around the month of September, because we normally have one in February, in June, and in September. But it looks like this year, Nintendo has been doing some odd things, as we started the year with the Partner Direct, and we just got a Partner slash Mini slash Indie showcase literally at the end of August, which was completely strange. And making our way all the way to the end of September, it's strange because it doesn't seem like Nintendo is having a Nintendo Direct in this month either. Which is strange because out of seven years of Switch Nintendo Directs in the month of September, we've had one every single year. Seven out of seven. And this is going to be the first year we don't have a general Nintendo Direct for the month of September for Nintendo Switch. And I think it's clear what the reasoning is behind this. Obviously, we are gearing up for a brand new console. A brand new iteration of Nintendo Switch which is going by the name Switch 2 currently online. So with a Switch 2 reveal being being imminent and what looks to be the end of current Nintendo Switch Nintendo Directs, I wanted to take a look back at all the Nintendo Directs that we've gotten for Nintendo Switch, all the way back from the beginning of 2017 and all the way up till now, here at the end of September of 2024. But first I want to thank today's sponsor, HelloFresh. HelloFresh is a weekly meal kit company that can help bring fresh ingredients straight to your doorstep for you to create your own masterpiece for dinner nights. Each box has easy to follow recipes with pre-portioned ingredients and these are all recipes that you get to pick out and choose. So if you're a picky eater like me, you can make it easy on yourself by only picking things that you'll love to make and that you'll also love to eat. In fact, this is the biggest menu yet with over 50 different dinner options for you to choose from with market items that will suit any healthy lifestyles. Let's face it, life gets busy and as a content creator myself, I often find myself not having enough time to prepare for dinner and this makes life so much easier, especially if you have children out there because odds are they're headed back to school. It's that time of year again and this makes things easy for you and also for them. So you can mix and match recipes and find the perfect meal for you and the whole family. Something super interesting for me is the breakfast deal that HelloFresh is doing right now. Considering the fact that I hardly ever eat breakfast because once again, I just never have time to get up and make food that early in the morning, HelloFresh is actually throwing in a free breakfast item in every single HelloFresh delivery. So HelloFresh being America's number one meal kit is definitely the case when it comes to me and my job because it saves me so much time so I can make more of these videos for you each and every single day. So if you're interested in getting your hands on one of these meal kits and also want to support the channel in a huge way, click the link in the description and use my special code on screen right now in order to get 10 free meals plus free breakfast for life. I mean, come on. You can't pass that up. It's real quick and it's real easy. Or simply just scan the QR code on screen to make it even easier on yourself. So why not just make life easier for yourself like I have with HelloFresh? Thank you guys for your support and huge thank you to HelloFresh for sponsoring today's video. So let's not waste any more time because there's so many Nintendo Directs to dive into. This is eight years with over 22 different showcases to talk about, and I want to kind of briefly talk about each one and how well they actually all did during the entire Switch era. So we have to start off all the way at the beginning with a non-Nintendo Direct presentation, and still to this day, my favorite Nintendo presentation Ever. Like seriously, I will never forget this night. Yeah, it was a strange time to be viewing this. If I'm not mistaken, this was a random Friday night, and this was such a bizarre event in the beginning of the year in January of 2017. And this would showcase the brand new hardware being the Nintendo Switch, showing off the functions and showing off exactly what this console is supposed to be, but also revealing some of the most amazing games that we would ever see from Nintendo. We saw 1-2 Switch, which was for better or worse, a game. We also got the reveals of a brand new IP being ARMS, which is super cool, and also Splatoon 2, Super Mario Odyssey, a brand new 3D sandbox Mario game, and of course, more information and a bigger reveal for The Legend of Zelda Breath of the Wild, which we would learn is a launch title coming with the console day one. I genuinely don't know if this event will ever be beat for what Nintendo was able to showcase in one presentation. So many amazing, huge first party games. It was seriously just a dream come true event for Nintendo fans and the perfect way to start off the hype for Nintendo Switch. Well, the hype would continue, because after a January presentation, we'd have to wait until a weird April Nintendo Direct to get more information. And 
It was strange because they were still showing 3DS games off at this time. Yeah, we were having things like Hey Pikmin shown off still, which is such a bizarre thing at the time. And even thinking back, I completely forgot that this was even a thing. They even had 3DS headlines. There were multiple 3DS announcements, even with a whole portable slash home console being a thing. So yeah, I'm not 100% sure what Nintendo's plans were with this. And obviously these games never did sell that well that were coming out towards the latter years of the console's release. But this Direct was nothing special. It was just giving us a little bit more information on some upcoming games, like ARMS kind of fleshing it out, and a lot of the show was dedicated to this game, showing off what this new IP was going to be about, and also showing off some more things with Mario Kart 8 Deluxe, which was just that, a deluxe version of the Wii U game. We would then end the show with brand new Splatoon 2 footage, showing off a brand new mode, kind of like a zombie horde mode, called Salmon Run. It was still kind of wild to me that Salmon Run wasn't even introduced until like halfway through 2017, which was crazy. Nintendo would then go on to E3 to host a brand new type of show called a E3 Spotlight, where they would spotlight four individual games and fill the rest with some smaller titles as well. But this is also where we got more information on Xenoblade Chronicles 2, which was another huge title revealed during that Switch presentation that I just completely forgot about until now. Don't kill me, Xenoblade fans. But this was a huge deal and another major release that would release at the tail end of the year. But goodness gracious, this Nintendo Direct was filled with tons of game announcements, including a brand new 2D Kirby with Kirby Star Allies, Pokin would be making a return getting us a deluxe treatment, we would have a new Yoshi game with Yoshi Crafted World, another 2D Yoshi experience, kind of following after the events of Wooly World, we'd get a brand new Warriors game but with Fire Emblem this time around, DLC for The Legend of Zelda Breath of the Wild which was heavily anticipated, that weird rumor of Mario and the Rabbids teaming up for a brand new RPG which actually came true and ended up being one of the best RPGs and one of the best Mario games, believe it or not, on the console. It was so surprising how it worked so well. Not to mention, it was the first time where we would see the big mechanic of Super Mario Odyssey to end the show, being the capture mechanic, which blew all of our minds. And this was still the same show that revealed Metroid Prime 4 being in development, which absolutely shook the world, even though we would go on to scrap development and restart entirely, and we wouldn't see a first gameplay trailer until six years later, this year in 2024. And then we had the September Direct of 2017, and nope, Nintendo still was not done and not ready to let go of the 3DS. Showing Ultra Sun and Ultra Moon and also some more Kirby goodness, Mario & Luigi remakes, and even Mario Party having a return on the 3DS. It was a weird time to be a Switch fan because you just had these two consoles both still getting separate games. In fact, the biggest reveal and talked about game here was probably Metroid Returns, which was a 3DS title, which was very strange, where everything else in the show was just touching on more information with Splatoon 2, including updates to the game, and also more in-depth deep dive analysis of Super Mario Odyssey. But overall, we've already got so much stuff announced in one year, what else could they show at this point? Woo wee! What an amazing way to kick off the Nintendo Switch. Well, how would Nintendo follow up in 2018? Well, they would have a March Nintendo Direct where they still have 3DS games coming out including another Mario & Luigi remake with Bowser's Inside Story, a Wario game, and some other additional 3DS games still coming to the console because support will continue throughout the year. But overall, this Nintendo Direct was pretty light. After an amazingly heavy first year, it only made sense that they'd have to have a cool-off session. And that's exactly what this was. We got things like Mario Tennis Aces, which was an okay Mario Sports title, more 3DS ports like Captain Toad, and even Hyrule Warriors getting a definitive edition on Switch that to this day, I am still trying to 100% and I just probably got around halfway done. Seriously, that game is an absolute monster. We'd finally see the Octo Expansion DLC for Splatoon 2, which was seriously one of the best parts of the entire franchise, and the show would end with an absolutely massive bombshell, revealing what looked to be something else Splatoon related, but nope, it would segue into a brand new Smash Brothers reveal with Super Smash Brothers Ultimate. Only we wouldn't know the name yet, but I was so looking forward to the next Smash Brothers to finally see a playable Inkling, or maybe even Octoling in the game, we wouldn't get Octoling, but seeing Inkling there was already making my dream come true without even seeing what this game was going to be in the first place. This was such an amazing reveal. And then the E3 show would start off with Damon X Machina. 
I remember a lot of people being kind of confused that this is how Nintendo started their E3 show of 2018, and it would kind of set the tone to what we could expect from the show. This was probably one of Nintendo's lesser exciting E3 shows, and one of their lesser exciting Nintendo Directs in general. I mean, literally over half of the show was dedicated to Smash Brothers, so any other new announcement was literally just like Super Mario Party, which was finally giving us a Mario Party on the console, but overall, yeah, the whole end of the show and middle of the show was dedicated to Smash Brothers, finally showing off what the game is, and what the game is going to be like, and the characters, and showing that everyone is here and returning from past games. This was a huge deal, and I don't think many people complain, because that's really all people People cared about since the announcement of Super Smash Brothers coming to Switch and finally getting the name Smash Ultimate was a really good feeling. And moving on to the September Nintendo Direct of 2018, this would be one of the last Nintendo Directs focusing on any type of 3DS games. Finally, we were excited to just be focused on Switch titles now, but they would then start to the show with something that was a major shock for us fans of Luigi's Mansion. Finally returning back from Dark Moon on the 3DS, we would get a brand new Luigi's Mansion 3, which would go on to be one of the best selling games on the console and one of the best looking games Nintendo has ever made. Nintendo would then show off some updates coming to Splatoon and a couple of small things including a port of New Super Mario Bros. U, including a new character being Peachette with the Super Crown, which would turn Toadette into Peach essentially and start a whole trend of memes online, and they would officially show off their Nintendo Switch Online, which they prepared us for and said eventually we would be paying for online, but they included some fun things to the service, which still to this day isn't all that great, but yes, you would have NES games eventually adding tons of other games like SNES, Game Boy Advance, Game Boy Color, and even Nintendo 64 games. But as the one company that never made its users pay for online, this was a big slap in the face to Nintendo fans. Like, wow, they're moving on to what Xbox and PlayStation are doing now, and this still hasn't sat well with a lot of fans, including myself, which I still feel is pretty unnecessary, considering the fact that Nintendo doesn't have all that many online games in the first place. Star Fox would make a return, uh, kind of, via Battle for Atlas as special characters, and still was like the best Star Fox game that's not even a Star Fox game. And we were also now in that era that every end of a Nintendo Direct was going to focus on some type of character reveal for Smash Brothers, and that's exactly what it did, showing Isabel for Smash, but also crossing it over with an Animal Crossing New Horizons tease, just telling us that an Animal Crossing game, finally a mainline one, was coming to Nintendo Switch the next year. So not the craziest year ever for Directs and Reveals, but definitely pretty decent considering the fact that how hard they went for the first year in 2017. Nintendo would get back into the full swing of things with a handful of surprises to start off the year of 2019, with the February Nintendo Direct revealing Super Mario Maker 2, which was a huge deal and a massive win for the Mario Maker community to finally move on to making levels, but this time on new hardware with the Nintendo Switch. But we'd see other surprises too, like Yoshi's Crafted World, which was teased so long in advance and finally got its name revealed and actually what the game was about. Also a brand new Fire Emblem game with Fire Emblem Three Houses, and of course, a plethora of Final Fantasy games all making a return to Nintendo Switch consoles. The show would end with a double banger, one being Astral Chain, which would grow to be a heavily popular game, and even rumors are circling today of a sequel potentially coming to the Switch too. And we would see a toy-like remake make for The Legend of Zelda Link's Awakening, all the way from the Game Boy, making a return to Nintendo Switch. This was overall a pretty solid show. But similarly to how 2018's E3 was less than spectacular, 2019 could be said the exact same thing. Where we would start to see trends of no more new exciting announcements to start a show or to end the show, instead, it was all reserved for Smash Brothers reveals. But without a doubt, these were the biggest parts of this E3 showing, because we got two of them, and both of them being pretty huge reveals. The first one being Hero from Dragon Quest, and the last one being the heavily requested Banjo and Kazooie, which absolutely broke the entire internet. But the only other things we got was the first look at the first mainline home console Pokemon game being Sword and Shield, and also a first look at Animal Crossing New Horizons, showing us the gameplay and what this game was going to be based on in the first place, which Nintendo wouldn't even know how big this would be just in the year that follows. The game would be delayed to the beginning of 2020, but it would be the best delay that's ever happened for Nintendo. 
perfect timing. And then Nintendo would end the year with a pretty average and kind of boring Nintendo Direct, just focusing on some small titles and touching on things that we already known about, and also showing yet again another fighter being Terry from Fatal Fury. But the biggest takeaways of this show being SNES games added to Nintendo Switch Online, more information on Animal Crossing New Horizons, and of course Xenoblade Chronicles Definitive Edition being a remake of the original Wii game as their final announcement. So overall, 2019 wasn't terrible with showcases, but it still never did reach the heights of some of the announcements in 2018 and especially the entire year of 2017. But very quickly, we would learn to not take what we had for granted, because 2020 would swing around and the world would be thrown into chaos with a global pandemic that absolutely shut down everything. That includes pauses and struggles with the gaming community and the gaming world as a whole, which meant we had a strange year. Yep, every single Nintendo Direct in the year of 2020 was a mini Direct Partner Showcase, and this whole thing was actually created simply for this year. For this hard time where Nintendo still had to get out information on third party games, but they had no information to share on first party games. And when they did, they just kind of shadow dropped games. This would start off as an absolutely abysmal thing for Nintendo, and their dislikes definitely racked up. People were confused, people were irritated, and people were just angry that every single Nintendo Direct every single month would pop up, but it would be a stubborn mini Direct partner showcase, showing nothing but third party games. And eventually, they started to get around on this and showcase some more exciting third party games at least, but overall, people were really fed up with this. And it wasn't until September rolled around for Nintendo to finally do something that people were really looking forward to, and that was the Mario Brothers 35th anniversary. This was a big deal because we've been hearing rumors all year long about a big 3D pack of Mario games, including 64, Sunshine, and Galaxy. And Nintendo would do more than that, and in fact, go all in with this show, including a a Mario Brothers Game & Watch limited release, a port of Mario 3D World coming to Nintendo Switch, but with an additional brand new game mode that offered a brand new 3D Mario experience with Bowser's Fury. They announced a Super Mario Bros. Battle Royale with Mario 35, and they revealed a brand new Mario Kart Live Home Circuit Toys to Life game, which was pretty neat. They would also announce tons of other little celebrations to be had for Mario's 35th anniversary, but the big dog was towards the end of the show, finally revealing the Mario 3D All-Stars that we've been hoping for. Now, of course, it wasn't what people were thinking, it was kind of the base games with some slight up res and changes for Nintendo Switch, but yes, we would be getting Mario 64, Mario Sunshine, and Super Mario Galaxy, and definitely was probably the biggest announcement of the entire year. This was a tough year for everybody, but thankfully Nintendo had Animal Crossing and delayed it to a perfect time to carry throughout this year. But as far as announcements go, this was a pretty hard year. For content creators and for gamers alike, it was pretty bare bones until finally reaching September and showing us this Mario themed direct. But after a very tough year for all of us, we'd get back on track in 2021 the following year with a February Nintendo Direct revealing Pyra and Mithra as the next playable character in Super Smash Bros. Ultimate. Overall, this show was pretty average, and most of the heat came towards the end. The only real big announcement we got in the middle was a brand new Mario Golf game being Mario Golf Super Rush, and at the very end of the show, they decided to really pack in some exciting announcements. We would get the announcement of a remaster of The Legend of Zelda Skyward Sword, being The Legend of Zelda Skyward Sword HD, coming to Nintendo Switch, which was my favorite favorite Zelda game of all time, so you can imagine how unbelievably excited I was, not only to get Mario Sunshine, my favorite Mario game the year before, but then the next year to get Skyward Sword. Like, are you kidding me? Then for Nintendo to end the show with... what? This definitely surprised everyone, and I don't think anyone had a speculation or prediction on their list that there would be a second Splatoon game on one console? On the Nintendo Switch, there'd be a Splatoon 3 and a Splatoon 2? This was crazy. We could not believe that this was coming, and it was pretty shocking. Yet, everyone was excited for it. And of course, this would be the final game of the current trilogy to wrap up everything that we've played in the last couple of years with the Splatoon franchise. For it being a fresh new series for Nintendo, it would be a mighty one to take out off the gate with two big titles on Nintendo Switch and one on its predecessor being the Wii U. Then jumping back into the E3 season, Nintendo would of course reveal a brand new fighter for Smash Ultimate to start the show being Kazuya Mishima from Tekken. But this show would be packed with small 
smaller announcements, and one that really knocked people's socks off. For one, we'd get a new Monkey Ball game, which was pretty exciting because it's been so long, which is kind of like a remake of all the past Monkey Ball games. And we'd get a brand new Mario Party game with Mario Party Superstars, bringing back boards and mini games from the past Mario Parties, which finally started to put Mario Party in the right direction. Everybody would then fall out of their seats seeing Metroid 5 pop up on the screen for it to be a brand new 2D Metroid game which was Metroid 5 because it was even named Metroid Dread like the game we've been hearing about for so many years that just never got to finish development. Yes, Metroid Dread, Metroid 5, whatever you wanted to call it, it was real and it was here, finally giving us an amazing 2D Metroid experience on modern hardware. We would also get announced a sequel to 2017's Mario Rabbids giving us Mario Rabbids Sparks of Hope, kind of throwing in a Mario Galaxy vibe with Lumas this time around, or what they would call Sparks. And finally, we would get our first gameplay look at the sequel to The Legend of Zelda Breath of the Wild. Still no title yet, but finally showing us a little more gameplay, it would seem to be more or less the same of Breath of the Wild, but with some new abilities and some secret areas that we've never seen before high above the skies of Hyrule. But of course, this game would not come out in 2022. Nintendo would finally announce the real final Smash Brothers Sakurai Presents, showing off the real final character that wasn't Byleth. But once again, this would be a show that was pretty self-contained, it wouldn't be anything super crazy. For instance, they showed a brand new 3D Kirby game, which was probably the biggest highlight of the entire year. Finally, Kirby jumping into 3D was so awesome, and the game was actually leaked literally like hours before the showcase, which was a bummer because man, it would have been such a surprise to see this for the first time. But yeah, it was super exciting for us Kirby fans for them to finally go 3D. And strangely enough, this is also where we would see the cast to the Mario movie. And of course, the internet would absolutely blow up at this because it was such an amazingly strange casting that we never expected. And it just felt like a dream to actually see these actors pop up besides these, you know, famous Mushroom Kingdom characters. It, it was strange. And after some brand new Splatoon 3 information, Nintendo would also give us a new look, or the first look rather, at Bayonetta 3. Like I said, not a completely knock your socks off type of show, but definitely a really good one to end the year. Well, 2022 rolls around and we start the year with another February Direct, and it's a pretty decent one. It starts off with yet again another Fire Emblem Warriors game, this time based on three houses. We'd also finally see the return of Mario Strikers with Mario Strikers Battle League, which wasn't the greatest of games and we kind of lacked a lot of content actually, but still, it was Mario Strikers and it was back. We got revealed a new Wii Sports, but this time called Switch Sports and kind of ditched the Miis for these new characters that a lot of people didn't like. You could still use your Miis, but it definitely was pushing for a new direction with this character design. And then we just sat and watched Nintendo developers play volleyball. Zoomy serving. How will the opposing team react? Takahashi makes the block. Another one's coming. Koizumi saves it. A setup in the air, and here comes the spike. The other team saves it and fights back. Yeah, this went on for almost two minutes straight. This was a Nintendo Direct, by the way. And then we got slapped in the back of the head with the craziest reveal ever, that Mario Kart 8 Deluxe would be getting DLC. Yes, this game that's been out for almost 10 years would be getting DLC. Since it's been out on the Switch since 2017, we haven't had any updates until now, which is absolutely berserk, but it would be a pretty hefty update, showing us that we'd be getting over six waves of content for the next two years, which is just massive, and turned out to revitalize Mario Kart 8 more than ever. And then the show would end with yet again another new Xenoblade Chronicles game coming to Nintendo Switch, with Xenoblade Chronicles 3, which was a pretty big deal for a lot of people. But starting the show, then ending the show with both Fire Emblem and Xenoblade tend to make some people a little less happy with the announcements during this show than others. So E3 time rolls around, and E3 ends up becoming cancelled once again this year, and every company left to do their own thing, where Nintendo instead just hosts again a partner showcase, returning from 20 2020, that evil showcase showing nothing but third party games. But overall, people were still kind of impressed by what they were able to show. A new Bomberman game, more information on Mario Rabbit Sparks of Hope since it's technically a third party developed game thanks to Ubisoft, and also Pac-Man World 1 getting a remake with Pac-Man World Repack, which absolutely made me fall out of my chair. But then Nintendo would start the September Direct once again with another Fire Emblem game, this time being another mainline with Fire Emblem Engage, and of course you could bet 
a lot of people were upset that this was like the third direct in a row where we got Fire Emblem or Xenoblade starting or ending the show. This was also the direct that was deemed the Farming Simulator direct, which literally showed so many farming games. I think someone set and counted, it was like six to seven different farming simulators. Like, how was this allowed? Miyamoto then came on to beg us to play Pikmin Bloom, because a lot of people probably weren't playing that game, but then said, hey, guess what? Yep, Pikmin 4 is finally a thing and it's coming soon. And oh my goodness, it's just a big sigh of relief from the Pikmin community. Finally, this game is real. But then we get the announcement of Kirby's Return to Dreamland Deluxe, my personal favorite announcement because I am such a big Return to Dreamland fan. In fact, it's my favorite Kirby game outside of the Forgotten Land. And then they would end the show with, once again, another Tears of the Kingdom trailer. It wasn't that long of a trailer and still didn't really showcase anything that we'd be actually doing in-game, but it did finally give us the name Tears of the Kingdom after they told us it would be a spoiler because now we know it was originally going to be called Tears of the Dragon. But this this is where it started to feel like Nintendo was slowing down, that they were slowly running out of big games and that everything coming out was more on the smaller side. That was until we entered 2023, and everything got flipped on its head, where it looked like Legend of Zelda Tears of the Kingdom was going to be the last major game for Nintendo Switch, Nintendo said nope. Hold my beer, we've got a lot left. We would start off 2023 with an extensive look at Pikmin 4, which would be following the route of Pikmin 2, believe it or not, and just growing in a new and more expansive way. Splatoon 3 would get DLC wave announcements, where the first wave would give you packs of the hub worlds from Splatoon 1 and 2, which was pretty cool, and of course the side order DLC would officially get teased. It would also give us our first look at the brand new mode for Kirby's Return at Dreamland, Deluxe being Magalore's Epilogue. But then they would finally follow up with Game Boy and Game Boy Advance games coming to Nintendo Switch Online, which obviously people were extremely hype about. It's crazy that it took this long, but it finally happened nevertheless. And speaking of finalies, the rumors were correct. We would finally see Metroid Prime getting a full-blown remaster, which would be one of the best-looking games on Nintendo Switch and go down as one of the top-reviewed games on the entire platform. Nintendo would literally drop the game that very same day, which was insane, but you could only get it that same day digitally. We would have to wait a couple of weeks to get the physical version, but still was an incredible surprise nevertheless. So all around, it was a pretty decent show, including a brand new look at the next wave of DLC for Mario Kart 8 Deluxe, including a look at the fact that we'd be getting new characters as well with Birdo's new addition, but finally another deep dive into The Legend of Zelda Tears of the Kingdom. And this time it was a pretty hefty trailer, showing a story, gameplay, and the brand new world we'd be exploring. This was a pretty decent start, but nothing super spectacular. E3 would make a return, but a lot of companies would instead back out and not even take part in the events, instead hosting their own events, and Nintendo would do the same, hosting their own June Nintendo Direct. They would start the show with the brand new main series Pokemon game being Pokemon Scarlet and Violet, showcasing the two DLC packs coming later that year. And this would be the same Nintendo Direct that started the Mario RPG madness that would go on for a year to follow, starting off with Mario RPG getting a full-fledged remake from the SNES, moving to the Nintendo Switch now. But that wasn't it. We get an inside look at a new Princess Peach game coming out, and Luigi's Mansion 2 getting a remaster announcement. Like what? All in the span of like a minute. A second WarioWare game for the console to be announced called WarioWare Move It, which is very similar to that of Smooth Moves on the Wii, and then they would end the show with something that would blow our minds. Yes, a another main huge game coming to Nintendo Switch. After all the leaks and rumors were suggesting Nintendo Switch was done until the next console with big games, Nintendo would finally reveal the next series in the 2D Mario formula being Super Mario Bros. Wonder. This year that was supposed to be a quiet swan song for the Switch turned out to be a massive huge hit, with Tears of the Kingdom, Super Mario Bros. Wonder, and Pikmin 4 crammed amongst other smaller announcements and releases throughout the entirety of the year, plus the Super Mario Bros. movie. Nintendo was killing it. September Direct to end the year would start off showcasing what side order was about, and show how it was like a dungeon crawler, a brand new style of Splatoon gameplay for us to explore with, and then follow up with the new Mario vs. Donkey Kong? game? It's actually a remake of the original Game Boy Advance game, which I don't know if anybody else besides me was 
literally dumbfounded and super excited as it was one of the first games I've ever played on the Game Boy. Another code of recollection would be making a return being two Wii games, one of which was not even released in the States, which was super cool. And we would finally learn that this Peach game is Princess Peach Showtime, allowing her to dress up and transform to have different abilities. Nintendo would then stop the middle of the show to announce a museum coming? Yeah, a Nintendo museum which we wouldn't see until the year that follows, and F-099. F-099 is back kind of, but on Switch Online as a battle royale. And with some other small announcements here or there, Nintendo would close the show with this. Literally still looking at this scene is giving me goosebumps and chills to this very day. I seriously think this is one of the biggest reveals Nintendo has ever given Nintendo fans in the recent 10 years. Fans all over the world finally cried out and rejoiced, because one of the best, if not the best, Paper Mario games, and one of the favorite Mario game fan classics from the GameCube would finally make a return as a full-blown remake, being Paper Mario The Thousand Year Door. Giving us Mario RPG and The Thousand Year Door within the last two directs was seriously something that no one would ever predict in their entire lives. This was truly incredible. Then that leads us to this year. Yes, the year of 2024, and would you believe it if I said we've only had one major direct this year? It's kinda crazy, and that's probably due to all the Switch 2 madness that's been floating around out there. At the very beginning of the year, we started to hear rumors that a Switch partner showcase would be hitting instead of a general at the beginning of the year, but that was only because it was to be followed in the month of March by a Switch 2 presentation, and as we would wait, we'd finally get news right before we would expect it that apparently there's been an an internal delay, which would then leave us with nothing but a partner direct to start the year, with zero first party announcements, which led people a little worried, but still, even with this in mind, it had us believing that something big was coming around the corner, and it kind of was. On May 7th of 2024, Nintendo would come out on Twitter and state that they would be officially announcing the successor to the Nintendo Switch console sometime in the fiscal year, finally acknowledging the existence of the thing and also acknowledging that there would be a Nintendo Direct in June. Like, Nintendo's never done this. This generated so much hype. But with the Switch successor coming soon, surely Nintendo doesn't have much to show during this, right? Well, we are not done with Mario RPGs because the impossible becomes even more impossible. Yes, Mario & Luigi is back. After the series developer Alpha Dream went bankrupt, we thought that this series would be cancelled, at least for a very long time, but nope, it'd be making a new return under new development and past Alpha Dream developers. This was so exciting and we literally got every Mario RPG we could have asked for in the span of a single year. Direct after direct after direct, showcasing Mario RPG, Paper Mario The Thousand Year Door, and now Mario & Luigi Brothership. What a possibly better time time to be a Mario RPG fan. Nintendo would reveal basketball for Switch Sports a whole year later for some reason, but man was it clear that Nintendo had so much left in the tank. For one, they revealed Donkey Kong Country Returns HD. I'm sorry Donkey Kong fans, we gotta pour one out here because it's still not a new Donkey Kong game, but it's still coming at the beginning of next year, at least it's something. We'd be getting a new return to form Mario Party game with Super Mario Party Jamboree, which looks to be the closest that we will ever get to the original Mario Party games, which seems to be a massive success with fans right now. We'd also be receiving a new top-down 2D Zelda game in the same year, featuring Zelda for the first time ever. Yes, playable Zelda! Oh my goodness, what is going on with Nintendo? For the Switch successor to be coming soon, they sure had a ton of games revealed here. It still felt amazing to be a Nintendo fan, and this Direct was awesome. But man, they would shock the world even more by ending the Direct with a first final gameplay showing of Metroid Prime 4. It has been literal years, years until we've gotten anything on the development of this game, and finally getting a full gameplay trailer showing in-game gameplay is something that we desperately wanted and needed to be assured that this project is moving along smoothly. And I think it's safe to say, it's definitely moving along smoothly, even showing Silux for the first time since Metroid Prime Hunters. Like, this is the trailer we've wanted. The game would then be 
entitled Metroid Prime 4 Beyond, and then be slated for next year, which who knows if that's actually going to happen based on how many times this has been restarted and paused and delayed, but I'm just happy to finally see the game. It's real. We then move on towards the end of August, and we start hearing rumors that Nintendo is pushing up presentations to get ready for something big around the month of September slash October, so we'd be getting presentations a lot sooner than normal, and that's exactly what happened. Nintendo would do the first ever partner showcase and indie world combined show at the end of August? Yeah, literally towards the last week of August, where the week prior they would also have a museum direct showing off the facility, but it was pretty strange that we were getting all these things at the end of August, almost seeming like Nintendo was gearing up for something huge in September. And that leads us to today. As of recording this video, there has been no mention or announcement of a Nintendo Direct or any type of showcase for Switch 2 or really anything as we are in the last couple of days of September. Now, there's a good chance that I post this and for some reason Nintendo chooses the last day of September to announce the thing or something. Uh, yeah, it's Nintendo. That definitely could happen. Uh, hopefully not because this video would just go obsolete. But at the end of the day, I think it's safe to say that we can close the door on general Nintendo Directs for the original Switch. It seems like Nintendo has released and revealed everything that they needed to show off and it's just time to move on to the next console. And that's exactly why I made this video. For the last seven years, we have received some amazing Nintendo Directs and presentations focused on upcoming games. And I can say as someone who went through the Wii U and the 3DS era that some of those Directs definitely drag. They might not have the charm and Nintendo love that they used to have, but they're definitely more quicker and to the point in getting out lots of more information in a shorter amount of time. And from these presentations, I have genuinely been very happy with some of the biggest reveals that I think I could have ever asked for as a Nintendo fan. Switch has given me some of the most hype moments in gaming history, and I just can't wait to see what a more powerful version of this console is going to do with the next seven to eight years. But here's to Nintendo's future, and here's to the future Nintendo Directs for the next hardware. We're just waiting on you and the Switch 2 now, Nintendo. <laughs> it's your move. But thank you guys for tuning in, and like always, I'll see you all in the next one. See you guys.